So I'm, uh, if I could have this laptop up as well sometimes, I'm going to be uh, a little controversial because I normally uh, talk at conferences with curators and not with the marketing department or the communications team. And usually when a communication team talks to a Wikipedian, the primary question, the very first thing is, where can we put our logo on Wikipedia? Which I think misunderstands the nature of the website. So I would like to contest the, the central phrase, which was, uh, the brand is everything, every, per every time, every person. Was that the right, the right description? I would say that online, at least, now I, I can't talk about the physical museum experience, I have no, no wish to contest the professionals in that field, but on, online, at least, if the brand is everything, and everything has to be branded, you lose. You lose. Uh, the, if you need to control, to own, to manage the relationship in a way that centralizes the brand over the information, people will go elsewhere where the information is more available, more accessible, more reusable. Now, I'm not saying that branding is a bad thing, or branding is uh, anti knowledge or anti-sharing, I'm not at all saying that, but if the first thing, especially in a public institution, uh, where the purpose, the mission statement is about sharing knowledge, if the first thing is the brand and then how do we get people to look at the information, someone is going to go online and go elsewhere. Uh, if I could have the computer. so. We heard this morning about the ambassadors on Google Art Project. If you Google, uh, which actually we're still logged in. <laughs> if you Google ambassadors, you, get, you have the Wikipedia article. If you Google uh, reliquary, you have two Wikipedia articles. So. The British Museum did not try, oh, and here is the Holy Thorn Reliquary as well. The British Museum did not pretend to own the concept of, uh, oops, not Holy. There we go. The British Museum did not pretend to own the concept of the Holy Thorn Reliquy or Reliquy in general, but if you want to find that piece of information and you want to learn about the Rosetta Stone or the Holy Thorn Reliquy or anything like that, you're going to come up with some other person's website first. And that's a good thing. If you have to own your topic and everyone has to come to your website before they can learn anything, they're not going to find it. So here is the what we've referred to before, what Matthew referred to before in the Holy Thorn Reliquary article, and there is the link, <coughs> excuse me, to the British Museum collection object. That's fantastic. That is a good example of referencing out where we want primary source material, good footnotes, good references. We want to send people, at least in Wikipedia, we want to send people to where they can get more information. We do not want people to stay on Wikipedia like a lot of uh, newspaper websites, journalism websites, they don't have any external links. They don't want people to leave. We want people to leave and go to the further resources. Everyone who leaves Wikipedia via a footnote is a, is a satisfied customer because we want them to continue on their learning journey where the information is best, which is generally the museum website. But if I was not able to find this information, if I had to know that the Holy Thorn Reliquy or the Rosetta Stone was in the British Museum before I was able to find it, I'm not going to be able to find it. And that's a problem with a lot of databases of multimedia content. When a museum or a, an archive puts up 100,000 images of their collection on their own website and then says, all rights reserved, us, you can't have it, you can't take it, you can't use it, no one can contextualize that information, and so no one can pass the good quality information and the links back to you. No one can share that. So 
they can, the people who can find that are only the people who are already there. So the principal purpose of Wikipedia is not a website, it's not a wiki, it's not an encyclopedia, it's not the internet. Our mission statement doesn't have any of these words in it. Our mission statement is the sum of all human knowledge available freely in your own language. Now, if the most efficient way of doing that was clay tablets attached to pigeons, then we would be in the pigeon breeding industry. But we're not. We've discovered the most efficient way of sharing knowledge is allowing people to collaborate on a web platform. Fantastic. And to do so in their own language. So you're aware we have all of these major languages, but also languages that you never heard of. It's really important for cultures that are not from the, you know, the OECD block, that Wikipedia is not a Western education project where we tell them how they should learn about stuff. You know, this is in your own language, written by your own local community. And I was speaking to a library conference recently where the Kenyan and the Mongolian librarians who were there were saying, that's fantastic. We, we don't have any materials, educational materials, many educational materials, written in our language by our own people. It's usually just stuff that's been given to us from America or from uh, England and then translated sometimes. It's really important the knowledge be kept and developed in the home community as well. So um, I would like to ask, how many of you have uh, a volunteer program in your institution? I find this is quite cultural. Some, in some countries it just doesn't happen at all, volunteers in museums, and some countries it's absolutely standard. So of those who have volunteer programs, how many of you have a e-volunteer program? Apart from the British Museum. <laughs> a digital volunteer program. None. And I've never seen an inst one institution that, that has a digital volunteer program. I would argue that Wikipedia is your digital volunteer program, you just aren't affiliated with it yet. Any subject that you have an interest in, every object and every subject, especially every subject, and in every language that you have a relationship to from your visitors or from your uh, collection, there is a group of people already working on Wikipedia about that. They're volunteers. It's a non-commercial website. We don't have any ads. We don't have any corporate sponsorship, so it's all donation-based, and they are desperate for good quality resources. They want to find you, but they don't know where you are. And they want to affiliate with you and, and feel valued, because they're already working on that subject area. Wikipedia has a very strong stance on copyright, which is why we are so visible. Uh, Wikipedia is the fifth most visited website in the world after Google, Yahoo, Facebook, and YouTube, and then it's Wikipedia. So we're the only .org and the only volunteer project in anywhere in the top 100 or so websites in the world. Our main page receives approximately 7 million people a day, uh, and we have about 375 million unique visitors uh, a month. And the reason we have that is because of our ability to share and our requirement to share. This goes back to the mission statement of information available freely, not just no cost, but no restriction. And this is why a lot of institutions with a strong focus on branding control can't work with Wikipedia. Because you, as Matthew described or intimated in his presentation, if you need to review or check or own or lock down the article once it's been helped by your curator, that's not going to work on Wikipedia. Everything has to be able to be changed and reused down the line. So here we have the Google Art Project Gigapixel images, for example, that are able to be used down the line in the Wikipedia articles about those topics, and they can be cropped to refer to the particular elements when we're talking about a, a particularly interesting uh, point of it. Here's our zoom of the same thing. And a lot of institutions, I'm sure, have, with the licensing or 
information sharing have policies about personal use or educational use or no cropping or no la la la. You've seen all these restrictions before. I would like to show the article uh, the raft of the Medusa, which is a Jericho painting in the Louvre. Now, this is a derivative work. This is taking the intellectual property that the, that the, uh, the Louvre owns the object, and we have made a change, which is not allowed according to the official terms and descriptions of nearly every cultural institution. I would call that a very important piece of educational material. Equally, that's not allowed. Equally, uh, that's not allowed, where we can compare and contrast different artworks and show how the knowledge has been transferred. In art history, we're quite aware of the idea of artists being informed by people before them and informing other artists down the line. And so when a cultural institution in the 21st century uses copyright and, con and contract law to restrict the ability of digital education to take this kind of approach, it, it takes the public domain and locks it behind a digital wall. And that's why Wikipedia is all about free in the legal sense, not just the commercial sense. But that doesn't mean it's not monetizable. Here are the page view statistics for the Wikipedia articles. The, Wiki, the images that have been taken in the British Museum that are used in Wikipedia articles. So as you heard, the British Museum did not give Wikipedia any of its own images. That's fine. We'd like them to, but that's not a, no, we don't have to. Uh, but these are the images that have been taken in the museum of their objects and used in different articles. So for example, obviously, um, okay, here we go, William Blake, British Museum object or print. Uh, the article uh, Culture, which is seen 168,000 times this month, uses a piece from the Egyptian collection. So when you combine all these page views across the different language editions, the British Museum has had images of its collection seen 33 million times last month. And that's, with, that's without it doing anything. Now, when the National Archives of Germany, the German Federal Archives, donated, donated their images to Wikipedia, and this is a boring collection of images, I'll tell you. This is all images from the, uh, from the East German archive that just appeared on their doorstep that they didn't really have catalogued. There was, they digitized them, but they didn't have much information that came with that collection. So they put them on Wikipedia, and we categorized them and linked them and shared them and translated them. So obviously you have a lot of war articles, but you have some really obscure ones like um, leprosy. This is from the Bundesarchiv collection. That's the record number. Um, and here's an image that is used in that collection. Here's the little caption, the traditional caption, the logo of the institution, the translation of the caption into 20 or so languages, the, all the metadata, the structured metadata. And combined, those page views make up 101 million page views per month. Uh, and it, that grows approximately two or three million every month. So you can see that with 101 million people looking at that collection, that no one, that those people didn't know existed before because of Wikipedia's contextualization, vast depth and breadth, also across different languages, uh, depth and breadth. <laughs> that you can push your collection, your knowledge, your brand out to places that didn't know you exist before. If the Bundesarchiv had said, no, we don't want to lose the ability to potentially have exclusive control over this collection, everyone has to come to us first, then all they have is a missing 101 million views, then, and they have what I would call portal envy. Do you remember when uh, the Smithsonian launched uh, Smithsonian Commons, or started talking about the Smithsonian Commons. Do you know about this concept? 
It's their own version of, uh, it's a sharing platform for their image collections across all of the Smithsonian museums, called the Smithsonian Commons, and people can tag, and they can, and they can make collections, and they can do all sorts of really cool stuff. And it's all about sharing and, and integrating with the people and all the good buzzwords. And then the next conference I went to, everyone was talking about the Smithsonian Commons as this really good idea, but they weren't talking about the Commons part, the sharing part. They were saying, we need to have our own branded Commons. So you're going to have 20 or 30 individual multimedia portals where everyone is fighting over who has the longer portal. Where the point of all the commons word is that it can be shared engaged and collected and categorized and tagged and passed around and linked back to where the information came from. If all you can do is work on a place that you control the portal branding, no one's going to go there. So I, I, I told you I was going to be controversial. I'm sorry. I'm, I just feel really passionate about this, as you, as you can clearly see. So um, I should point out that there are seven Wikipedians here at this conference for the duration of the conference. They're mostly up the back. You, that's John, the guy who wrote the Holy Thorn Reliquary article. We also have someone each from Barcelona, so from, from Spain, from Czech Republic, France, Netherlands, England, Australia, and Germany. So if you come from any of those countries or speak any of those languages, you can come and talk to us about how your institution can potentially have a relationship with Wikipedia. There is no shortage of different ways you can engage with Wikipedia, from the residency project that we did at the British Museum, to the multimedia donation, to metadata sharing, uh, all sorts of different kinds of concepts. But the point is that it is all about the free. It is about the sharing and not about the ownership. And as, as, Bridget, as um, Matthew was implying, the, the light touch, the, the ability to say, here's the expertise and here is the knowledge. Please attribute where it comes from, but we want you to use our stuff. We want it to be made available. Not on our own terms, not on anyone's terms, just here is the best quality information, and the British Museum has the best quality information about the British Museum. Makes sense. So it should be the most easily, easily able to be found. If it's not findable, then they're going to be using, people are going to find someone else's material. Um, as a result, there is a museum in Texas that has a very small collection of Roman coins. It's not their major collection, it's not their major interest, but they put some high resolution images up and said, you know what, have them. We're not gonna try and claim you know, full copyright and only this and only, just have them and please attribute them to us. And so those coins are the most visible examples of Roman coins. And as such, whenever a new person comes to the field of learning about Roman coins, they think that this museum in Texas must obviously be the best museum in, in the world for Roman coins because they're the ones who are having all their images shared around and attributed back to them. So it's, there is definitely, definitely a first mover advantage in this, in this space. And you can't, uh, it's a use it or lose it kind of situation, or share it or lose it in, in this sense. Now I can not surprisingly talk for days and days about Wikipedia or about copyright or about anything you'd like to know about Wikipedia. I think I should uh, just simply say that you need to know about these five tabs across any article. So let's look at a completely random one, Mountain Gorilla. Every article requires the article view and the discussion view. The discussion view is where we talk amongst ourselves about how to improve the quality of the article. So a very easy way for a curator or a museum to get involved is go to the article about your thing and leave a message at the bottom of it saying, hi, I'm from this museum, I'm the curator, I have, we have a lot of images or collection or interest in this subject, can we talk? And the person who is interested in that subject will get in contact and will feel loved by you and want to, want to share the love back. The second thing you need to know is that any article is able to be edited. You'd be surprised the number of people who don't know that Wikipedia can be edited. So you click the word edit, 
And then you can go and read the text. It's a bit codey, but you can edit that live if you want. So we can uh, um, find, and if I can find something. Hmm? <laughs> I'm not going to log in right now. <laughs> but you can, you can just change the article live if you want. If it gets worse, someone will change it back. If it gets better, it'll stay. And finally is the history. Now, this, I'm a historian, and this is the most important part for the historiography of Wikipedia. A lot of people think that it just changes, and then we throw away the old version, and so no one knows what it was like before. If you click on the History tab, you can see every single change of the article for any article ever. We keep every copy. So you can compare the article as it stands now to how it stood a couple of hours ago and see what the change was. OK, here we go. Someone removed the word its oh. or added it. And you can see the comparison. That's really important entirely for the practical sense of knowing how the article has evolved, which as a historian is, is really important. And it's a very clever way of checking on the validity of the content. So it's not like you're just undermining the people who have gone before you. Finally, you should know about the article, the website, glamwiki.org. Glamwiki.org is the place where we're trying to compile all of the information about the glam sector, galleries, libraries, archives, museums, which is what we call the, the cultural sector. Every place has a different acronym. We just find this one particularly cute, and it means I can talk about David Bowie a lot. So glamwiki.org takes you here, and that's where we're compiling all the information about who you can contact locally in your, in your home city, where you can get started to learn how to edit. What about copyright? What about conflict of interest? What about branding? What about all the different kinds of questions? What about links to my, to my website? Yes, we want them, but in a specific kind of way. And this is where you can find that information. Uh, model projects, things that have happened before, how to do an image donation, how we can improve your OCR for scans, how we can add uh, QR codes, these kinds of things, case studies, success stories, and so forth. There's the British Museum project. So glamwiki.org is the place to go to find out more information if you do not have access to Wikipedian. Fortunately, though, we have access to seven Wikipedians for the next three days out in the lounge area. Thank you. Thank you.